Raise your hand if you saw these guys play on the Ed Sullivan show. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little trouble raising your hand if you're really as old as I am, but great memory. And it doesn't make us too old to learn how to play that song that they played, All My Lovin' on the banjo. So let's take a look. This song will not be that difficult to play. We want to make sure we get in the same key as the Beatles, which was the key of E, which sounds trickier than our open key of G that we're used to. But if we put our capo on and do a simple D chord fingering, just two fingers, we're now in tune, ready to go. The one adjustment you have to make is tune the fifth string to the high note B, which if you have little spikes will be the spike at the ninth fret. So your tuning, if you're using a tuner, when you have the capo on, will read E, a, C sharp, E, and fifth string B. Looking at just the melody notes, we discover that many of the notes are being sung on the offbeat, very syncopated. Begins right here. So that would sound like this. What we'll want to do to be able to make these notes fit more smoothly into banjo rolls is put the melody notes a little more on the beat, which would sound like this. A forward roll is used for each of the first four measures. The spelling of your right hand fingers will be T M T I M T I M. And here are the forward rolls in the tab. Starting right here, as you can see, we're playing different strings. Thumb on the fourth string, and this note is played by your index on the fourth string before you move up to index on the third string. Still the same roll. T M T I M T I M. Next measure. T M T I M T I M and so on. You just have to be flexible on which strings you're going to hit. As far as the left hand fingers go, whenever you see a fret four down here on string four, fret that with your third finger. <laughs> shift to my second finger right here so that I can get this slide and then I'm back in that same position. Notice that most of the time our fill-in notes are just open strings. The first time you actually hold a chord is on the E minor chord before the C chord. Start off holding just your third finger on string one. Add your second. Put it back down as you put your C chord down. And then bring your second finger over. That's all you need of the A chord. You don't have to put a bar there or play an A7 chord. The entire song by the Beatles is really just a little bit over two minutes long. Very quick. Uh, looking at this chord chart here, we can see that what's being referred to as part A is a verse. There's two verses, so you would repeat that before you do the first chorus and then this middle part that gets labeled part C that's where George takes a guitar solo on a totally different part it's not part of the melody of either of the other parts of verse or the chorus come back play the first verse again go out with the chorus for our banjo arrangement we'll simply do one verse and one chorus just a quick mention that if you were going to play two verses before you go to the chorus, you would stop right here on beat two and then go back and pick up the second set of lyrics starting on beat three, four. We don't need to really worry about holding chords while we're soloing as all of our notes are mostly open string fill-in notes. Should you choose to play rhythm in a situation, you could play that B minor chord. 
followed by a B flat, which is the third fret, but you make it augmented by bringing in fingers three and four. And then it drops to a D chord. So those chords in a row sound like this. When playing the chorus, you will hear one note out of that augmented chord that really helps define it. That note right there, third fret on the third string. So that's why it's in there. We'll now play the entire solo. It'll be played at 120 beats per minute which is about 25% slower than what the Beatles played it at. If you go back to the very beginning of this video, you'll hear it played a little more up to speed. <laughs> 